Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Let us pray. 
Almighty, victorious, triune God, we magnify and lift up thy holy name. May the transformative power of your love continue its work in each of us each and every day. Allow, O gracious God, for your Spirit to fall afresh on us, for us to be filled with your Spirit. Give us sensitive spirits to know when we may have quenched or grieved your Spirit. Forgive us for our disobedience, forgive us for our lack of commitment, and forgive us for any time we have abandoned our charge. Melt us, mold us, fill us, and use us for thy glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Greetings. I share a word today from Luke chapter 23, beginning to read at verse 39 and will end at verse 43. One of the criminals who were hung there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserved for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, 
Remember me when you come in your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Let us pray. Bless now, God, these words to our hearts and glorify your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Left for dead. Left for dead. Indicates our calculation and our conviction that a person or situation has reached the point of no return. There is no possibility of life. Nothing more can be done to prolong life. It is over. Close the door. Turn off the lights. Pronounce the benediction. Pull down the shutters. There is nothing more. This passage or episode in Luke tells us that with God, no one and no circumstance is left for dead or has passed the point of no return. This Luke and passage or episode clearly shows that Jesus and the thieves were left for dead on the cross. The Roman Empire was in no doubt That was the end of Jesus and his talk of the reign of God. We have no God but Caesar. The crucifixion was reserved for rebellion against Roman imperial rule. Crucifixion spelt and meant the end of life. There would be no coming down. There will be no coming back from the cross of crucifixion. And so we could listen to those and the emails wrote, we thought that he was the one to redeem Israel. So on the cross, Jesus was between two persons, one in the grip of despair and the other desperate to find hope. The one in despair was a convict undergoing conviction for his crimes. In the hands of justice, his sins had found him out and he was enduring the reward for his deeds. Besides, he was questioning and challenging Jesus. Perhaps blinded by his despair, his bleak future and the meaninglessness of his existence. He did not recognize that repentance is not a denial of the past, but a moment wherein the past acquires new meaning. Desperate for hope, the other derided him for questioning and challenging Jesus. He recognized he had but a short time to live. By sunset, he would die. He was fastened hand and foot to his cross. So if his salvation depended on active life, he could not be saved. His only hope was to trust at once and wholly in Jesus. He did. And Jesus opened a path of deliverance and meaning for him. So here was Jesus pinned between desperation and despair. And Jesus was not crying out against God. Jesus was crying to God, diving into, plumbing the depths of sin, despair and desperation, and identifying with hopelessness and pain. We know, though, that there was more to Jesus' crucifixion. Contrary to what the empire would have us believe, crucifixion is not the end of life. Hope, or is crucifixion curtains? 
we must not get caught up in thinking and believing the empire then and now and the despair it breeds and spreads. We must not get caught up in thinking and believing that one or circumstances past the point of no return, left for dead. For where the world condemns, Jesus enables the condemned to testify, don't tell me who I was, tell me who I am. For where the world is quick to castigate and criticize and belittle, Jesus enables the saved to respond. By the grace of God, I am what I am. For where the world finds it difficult to share the joy of the redeemed, Jesus extends the invitation and affirms, but we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. With God, one never passes the point of no return. You are never dead. You are never without hope. You are never left for dead. The passage tells us more. It tells us more. The passage tells us of our place and task as a church in society. Our place and task as a church in society. Our place is in between those trapped and stifled by the frustrations and disappointments of life. Our place is in between those trapped and stifled by the frustrations and disappointments of life. You can neither part nor end the fight by staying on the side of the combatants uh, at a distance from them. You have to get in the middle of them and part them one from the other. Same way, sisters and brothers, you have to get in the fray. I know we sing lustily and convincingly. I want to live above the world. I want to live above the world. And I have decided to follow Jesus. The cross before me, the world behind me. But be reminded of what we also sing. No said the Lord. The hour is past. We go. Our home, our life, our duties lie below. While here we kneel upon the mount of prayer, the plow lies waiting in the further there. Here we have sought to learn God's heavenly will. There, there, we must do it, serve, and seek God still. If one aspires to reach the mount of God, over the dull plains of earth must lie the road. He who best does his lowly duty here shall soar the fathers in that loftiest sphere. In God's high work, we find God's promised rest. And God is the nearest one who serves God best. This Good Friday meets persons who are desperate and despairing for hope. The terminally ill, those with sentences of imprisonment and are imprisoned, those not experiencing any ease of the economic squeeze of high prices and debts, those who have not kicked the habit of addiction, those in abusive relationships, those who have dropped out of the school system, those who have forgotten God and wandered far away from God. Our place as a church as witnesses to the gospel 
of Jesus Christ is between them and among them in between. Our place as a church is in between those trapped and stifled by the frustration and disappointments of life. That's our place. And our task is to preach and model hope. Our task is to preach and model hope. This Good Friday meets us in the grip of hopelessness in, in the world, our society, and our lives. The international community is struggling to bring an end to a war that has turned Palestinians into an abattoir or human barbecue. And the international community has seemingly forgotten the war to one country of Sudan, which is on the brink of human starvation. Haiti and our doorsteps is in desperation for well-being as it struggles to restore democracy and civilian rule. God knows many are struggling today with uncured illnesses for which the hope of a cure is dim. The model of hope of the cross is love and trust. Love and trust. God's love for the world and faith in God's purposes for the world's well-being. That's our model of hope. That's our model of hope. It is, it is a model of love and trust. It is faith that love will triumph over hate and life over death. And so Paul, having been convinced that death has been swallowed up in the victory of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, encouraged the Corinthians never to lose hope. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. And so that's our task. Our task as a church and as witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ is to preach and model hope. And so how about you? Where are you positioned as a witness of the church, bearing your own witness and giving your own testimony about the cross? Are you in between? In between? Are you modeling a, a, a holding out hope to those left for dead? Are you? Are you? If you are not in between those trapped and stifled by frustrations, disappointment and sins in, in their lives and uh, left for dead. If you're not holding out hope to those left for dead, then perhaps you have not been healed by the cross of Jesus Christ. Then perhaps you do not know Jesus in the pounding of your sin. And so you need to know Jesus. If you are in between and holding out hope to those left for that, then I know you are struggling. I know you are being challenged. I know that you are having your faith tested. At times, your hope flickers and you get weak. But keep faith. Keep faith. And keep the faith. Keep standing and be a soldier of the cross. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. The strife will not be long. This day, the noise of battle, the next, the victor's son. To him that overcome it, to her that overcome it, a crown of life shall be. She with the king of glory shall reign eternally brothers and sisters with god 
but with God, no one and no circumstance is left for dead or has passed past the point of no return.
Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.